Electricity is a key agricultural input and a reliable power supply is especially critical for the sector's irrigation. Can the industry and ESCOM work together to ensure food security? Kulani Siwea sheds some light on this topic. Torna keir minting haman van Syngenta in die atelier, hy gesels oor agri-climb en hoe dit by die volhoubaarheid van die bedrijf inpas. Maar nou eers die jongste landbouwnees. Communique exists to serve feed and food producers. Welcome to today's news. The New Zealand government is planning for farmers to pay tax on agricultural greenhouse gas emissions from 2025. According to a report on BBC, the government has started a consultation process to seek industry feedback about its emission levy price proposal for agriculture. The country plans to cut biogenic methane emissions, which come from plant and animal sources, by 2030. Revenue from the agriculture emissions levy will go towards new technology, research and incentive payments to farmers that do adopt climate-friendly practices. According to the European Centre for Disease Prevention, a large number of cases of highly pathogenic avian influenza have been detected in wild and domestic birds in Europe. During previous summers in Europe, virtually no or only a few cases were detected. This year, however, a total of 788 cases of highly pathogenic avian influenza virus were reported in 16 European Union countries and the UK. These consisted of 56 cases in poultry, 22 in captive birds and 710 in wild birds. The cases were reported between 11 June and 9 September this year. And the national champions in the 25th Samic National Carcass Competition for pig producers and emerging cattle farmers were recently announced. The competition focuses on production methods and standards to ensure top quality red meat. The winners include André Kombrink in the pig commercial single and group categories, as well as Miriam Vent in the super ox emergent categories. Keep your eyes peeled for interviews with them on PLAS TV soon. With load shedding escalating as South Africa enters the summer crop planting season, the current energy crisis may have implications for food security into the coming year unless farmers can put measures in place to mitigate against the effects of load shedding. With me today, Kulani Siwea from AgriSA, uh, chatting to us about this concern, actually, Kulani. Welcome once again. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's great to be here. First things first, what is the reason for the current energy crisis? Yeah, look, I think it's a combination of many factors. Uh, on the one hand, we do have an ailing energy infrastructure. Um, this is what we're hearing. We also know of the fact that there's been new power plants and power stations that have been built but have not come online. Or even if they do, they still also have been breaking down. And of late, we're also learning that uh, ESCOM is running low on diesel, so they're not able to generate power using gas as well. So it's a combination of many factors, but uh, I think the mainstay of the whole conversation is just the ailing power utilities that are not able to keep up with the demand. And uh, ESCOM as well is also quite running quite back or with a backlog when it comes to maintenance of these particular infrastructure units. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. What sectors are impacted most by this? I think it's everyone in the economy. If you think about it, uh, it's not just uh, the farming sector, but even when you're driving to work, for example, uh, you caught into load shedding, whether the traffic lights are not working, so there's a, a delay in delivery for maybe, example, for foods or for any other essentials. So generally speaking, it's 
all of the sectors that are impacted, but obviously it has a different uh, impact on, on, on the different sectors differently de depending on the reliance on, 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 on ESCOM. But what is the impact on agriculture? And can you give us some numbers or statistics? Yeah, look, if we think about it, the agricultural sector is quite energy uh, intensive and uh, irrigation reliant. Uh, from the latest statistics that we've seen from the Department of Agriculture, the sector is spending close to 10 billion rand uh, on electricity. Uh, now, this constitutes about 7% uh, on, 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 of what they spend on intermediate services and goods and services. But the impact to agriculture is just more than the numbers. It's, it's, it's job losses because farmers are losing out on income when their foods are not being able to be delivered to the markets on time or there's bad quality and they're losing out on income. So I think the ripple effect is quite sparse compared to what we may see on paper for the agricultural sector in this regard. Mm -hmm. What agricultural sectors are most impacted? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's everyone, to be quite honest. It's the entire value chain. Uh, but I think those that feel it the most would definitely be those that are irrigation reliant, especially if you think about it that um, if you miss out on your irrigation window, you'll need to make up for that in some other way or form. We're now seeing farmers having to keep their laborers over for overtime to work on the times that they've lost out in terms of irrigation. Uh, but that's just the one side on the irrigation. But there's also cold storage units that are also breaking down or are not able to keep the food and produce uh, at a good quality and well frozen uh, during this heat uh, and this summer season. So it's the entire value chain. And obviously it has uh, dire repercussions uh, as you can go on into the markets, particularly for those farmers that are exporting. The impact of load shedding on agriculture, this is what we are talking about with Kulani Siweya from Agri SI. Don't go away, we'll be back with our discussion. Syngenta, bringing plant potential to life. Goeiedag, graan en oliesade het die afgelopen week weer eens goed gevaar op die termijnmark verlevering in december. Wit en geel millieprijs is onderscheidelijk met 2.2 en 3% op en is nou stevig boor die 5000 rand per ton. Koringprijs het week op week met 2.5% gestuig, terwijl oliesaadse prijse vir sonnebloemsaad en sojaboon onderscheidelijk met 7.2 en 7.9% gestuig het. Hier die goeie stijgings en die komuniteitspryse is grootliks as gevolg van droogte en in woordelike halfrond in Amerika so ook um, in Suid-Amerika waar aanplantings laat is en dis die internationale prijse oordruk. Die olieprys het die afgelopen week basis onveranderd geblei terwyl die rand verder verswak het in die vernaamste geld in jyde 0.9% swakker ten my dollar, 1.6% swakker ten my pond en 0.3% swakker ten my die euro. As promised, we are talking about load shedding's impact on our agricultural industry in South Africa. And with me, joining me now again is Kulani Siweya from Agri SA. Kulani, let's talk about exports. How does the load shedding affect our exports? Yeah. So for our export farmers, let's not forget that they have certain requirements and standards that they need to keep for all the markets that we are exporting to. Now, if the produce is not kept at a certain cold temperature uh, that's ideal to keep the fruits longer, we have one of two things happening. Either the fruit gets there uh, and it's already spoiled or the quality deteriorates and then there's not, uh, penalties that the, the farmers then incur. And this is very detrimental uh, for the sector or for those particular farmers in themselves because it's, a, it's an income mm. uh, issue that they're then going to be facing. And that then undermines the viability of those particular farmers to continue their farming activities, ultimately putting jobs at risk and food security at risk as well if they're not able to export to those particular countries. But also for the country, we're losing out on foreign uh, currency that we're earning in from, from those particular uh, uh, countries. And uh, finally, maybe to wrap it all up, is that we then lose out on our credibility as being the country that will supply quality food over the long run. Sure. What is the greatest threat of load shedding to the country? Sure, business confidence definitely has been hit. We're already seeing it already. Uh, so we're not seeing uh, investments coming in. We're not seeing uh, uh, new kind of ideas coming in. And this then stifles on growth. It then uh, speaks to 
uh, employment on the one hand. It speaks to the viability of many sectors, including the agricultural sector. And the agricultural sector in South Africa is in a very peculiar situation or peculiar position because those farmers are receiving little to no support from the government. And they still have to produce this food uh, uh, from their own capital with uh, less less uh, support. And I mean, I've noted this before when we were speaking earlier on, it's just how resilient and agile our agricultural sector is. But we cannot use that as a, an excuse going forward to say our farmers are resilient and they're agile. That's no excuse. Government is needs to deliver on what they uh, mandate to do primarily. No. Well, there might be a light at the end of the tunnel, if I can uh, call it that. Just give us some perspective on the recent announcement that Eskom will approach the market to procure a thousand megawatts. Yeah, I'm sorry to dim your light. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, as it stands, we still don't have much clarification as to what that entails. We've heard this conversation before. We've seen uh, the president come out, I think, a year ago, lifting up the threshold for self-generation licensing. But there's still red tape that's being attached to that. So we still don't have much in indication as to uh, how far or how extensive this whole program will work. How soon will those new power uh, producers be uh, integ uh, integrated into the, in the, into the grid in entirely? So on paper, it may look like there is light at the end of the tunnel. But unfortunately, I think that's still because of the mechanics behind the works. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic about that development. And if I can just maybe add on this, we also feel that there's also a lost opportunity uh, from government to involve the agricultural sector based on those particular red tapes. We have seen the lifting of the threshold when it comes to licensing. Our farmers have expressed themselves that they firstly have enough land to set up the power generation units. They've also got private capital. But because of red tape, they're still limited to the amount of electricity that they can produce, bring back to the grid, or even bank. And again, in this current climate, you then wonder, uh, how is our government thinking about this? Well, that's the question. <laughs> In closing, Kulani, what advice do you have for our farmers? I mean, there are great challenges out there. Yeah, look, uh, it's a very difficult environment that they're operating in. Uh, we are seeing a whole lot of farmers needing to consider alternatives. Many are leaving the grid, uh, despite the challenges that is also attached to that. Some of them are spending even more on uh, diesel, for example, to run their generators for their particular units. So it's a very difficult environment for them. And I understand and sympathize with all of that. Uh, but all I can just say is that, look, we just need to keep on pushing. Uh, we've proven time and time again that as a sector, we're able to weather the challenges. And without using that as a, a scapegoat, I think, uh, uh, let's maybe give kudos to the farmers who keep producing the food and uh, remain positive in this climate. And we trust them for that. Definitely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gulani Siwea from AgriSA. BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. BKB, the trusted home of agriculture. Miravis Neo, Sien die Verskil. Ons vind nou meer uit oor AgriClime van Syngenta en gesels vir oogend met de Minting Haman. Minting, baie welkom. Baie dankie, Lisa. Is lekker om hier te wees. Wat is AgriClime? Lise, AgriClime is een <coughs> risicobestuurprogram van Syngenta, waar producenten kan opteken en waar hulle dan die risico kan bestuur tegen te veel reen, droogte of koue stress op hulle gewasse en hulle kan dan een terugbetaling ontvang <coughs> wat gebaseerd is op die historische reenval van, van hulle plaas. Was uh, AgriClime oorspronkelijk nie net op droogte gemik nie? Dit was oorspronkelijk net op droogte gemik. Ons het dit in 2019 geloot 
en toe was het droog geweest en het was succesvol geweest, boer het opgeteken en ons het uitbetalings gekry en 2020 het, het ons in die land nie na strelsel begin ingaan en het het baie begin reen en toe sien ons dat te veel reen eindelijk ook een probleem vir die boere wees, ons weet nog altyd dat dit so is, maar ons was so gewoond aan die droogte en toe het ons die te veel reen bijgevoeg en dit was baie succesvol gewees in die laaste seizoen is al meer as of ongeveer 50 boere wat uitbetalings gekry het vir te veel reen. Maar hoe bepaal Syngenta hoeveel reen op een plaas of plaasse val? So, as een, as een boer opteken of een producent opteken vir Agritlaan, dan sit hy sy koordinaatpunte op die program in en door middel van satellietdata bepaal Syngenta dan hoeveel dit reen in een sekere risikoperiode waar die, waar die boer geke, gekies het. Um, die reenval word dan, data word dan vergelijk met historische data van de afgelopen 20 jaar, um, om dan te bepaal as het onder 20% van die deersnit van die reenval oor die afgelopen 20 jaar is, dan begin die boere uitbetaling te kry tot een maximum van 27% van sy Syngenta aankope wat hy kan terugkry. Nou ons weet Sensaku is deel van Syngenta, so kwalificeer saad aankope dan ook vir die terugbetaling. Ja, ons het het getoets die vorige seizoen en van 2022 af is het is, is beskikbaar om die saad ook daarop op te sit. En ja, dit maak het vir die boer net baie beter om sy risiko te bestuur, aangezien een groter gedeelte van sy totale inzetkost is dan nou op Agritlime is. En ja, hy daai risiko best, kan bestuur in termen van te veel reen of droogte en dan een groter gedeelte van sy totale inzet eindelijk kan terugkry as hy weer teen omdraai. Mijn ding, het klink alles goed en wel, maar wat kost die procent, producent om deel te neem? Ja, dit, ko- dit kost die producent niks nie. Jy moet een Syngenta client wees en een sekere waarde aankoop, dan kwalificeer jy automatisch vir die program en jy kan het terugbetaling kry. So, basisse beginsel waarop het geskoe is, is Syngenta het kwaliteit producte en as het een goeie seizoen is en daar is reen en daar is, daar is peste, daar is onkruide en en swamme en insekte, dan beskerm Syngenta sy producte jou. Maar wanneer die reen of die weer teen jou draai, dan skop Agritlime in, dat daai gewaasbeskerm producte wat jy gekoop het, wat dalk nou vir jou moendlik voel nie nodig sou wees nie, kry dan, kry dan weer een gedeeltekie terug door middel van Agritlime. Nou ja, baie dankie vir die inlichting. Dankie. So sê Munting Hatting van Syngenta, en hy het vandag vir ons vertel van Agritlime. Miravis Neo. Sien die verskil. Ilanko, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life.